So I am Darian Van Gorkum. This is Jerry Van Gorkum. We are the West Richland Emergency uh, Communication Specialist for the West Richland Stake of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. We've had a number of members in the stake and citizens in the area not be able to hit our repeater, which is again four miles west of Benton City, up on the Horse Heaven Hills at about 2,000 feet of elevation. It turns out that there's a few areas where there's pockets of shadow from the radio waves from the repeater, not able to allow people with a standard handheld with a rubber ducky antenna to reach the repeater. My house here, my, my front driveway is one of those. I can't hit the repeater with just my handheld. I, I need to do something more to get better range for an antenna from a handheld to hit the repeater to have it work. Our solution is what's called a Yagi. This is a miniature little Yagi handheld device that will attach to your radio through a cable. And this will allow you now to reach the repeater because the Yagi antenna actually focuses your radio beam uh, propagation to basically a column or a cylinder rather than a omnidirectional complete 360 degree beam. This actually focuses the beam exactly where you point it and it will reach the repeater much better. So I thought I would go over how to assemble this and how to tune it to your radio, your GMRS Baofeng radios. It's going to come in one, two, three, four separate pieces plus the little bracket you can attach this to a master pipe. So the first thing you'll do is you'll take out the elements of the Yagi. It's going to come numbered on the element one, two, and three. So these have numbers on them and they correspond to numbers on the what's called the beam of the Yagi. And you can see they're numbered here one, two, and three. There's a little hole in each of these elements. So you'll slip the number three element into the number three hole and you'll put a screw in to hold it in place. I would suggest you get that screw pretty tight so that you don't want any looseness in this connection. This is a, uh, needs to be a solid connection. You'll do the same for element three, two, and one. Then you'll flip the antenna over and now you'll need to take the coax connection, this is a standard uh, coax SO239. You'll slip it in the hole here. You'll place a washer and then the retention nut over the SO239 You'll thread the nut on. And I would suggest you don't thread the nut on real tight yet with a wrench. You want to wait for the next step. The next step is going to be to tune this antenna to the GMRS frequencies. So you'll get this somewhat tight here. Then you're going to take this little bar right here, and it has two little Allen screws on the bottom and the top, right here in the center. And they should both be in there. Make sure they're there when you get this. You're going to slide the tuner bar over. You're going to then take the included little tiny Allen wrench. And I want you to slide this tuner bar about as far over as it can be. And then you'll tighten both the top and the bottom of the tuner bar. And that's going to set the antenna to the GMRS frequency to make this a resonant antenna for the GMRS band. So again, this tuner band needs to be to the end of that tuner bar. Let me explain why. This little handout here, paper that comes with it, 
gives you an SWR chart. And I test with my own SWR meter and this is spot on. It's centered at the 435.0 uh, frequency. That centers mean it's resonant there. So if you put this bar right in the center here, you're going to be resonant or you're going to have the most um, efficient antenna working at the 435 frequency. Out here at the very end shortens the antenna and you'll be resonant at the 465 frequency. This SWR meter goes to 470 to 400. We want to be 465 on average here. So if you're all the way out to the end of the resonant bar, you're going to be resonant for 465 or GMRS frequencies. If you're a ham operator and you want to be uh, resonant at the 440 frequency, this is the common 440 band that ham operators use. Uh, and there's plenty of repeaters with the 440 band you would want to put this resonant bar about halfway across and that would put it pretty close to here. Remember 435 is center of the, of the bar. So just past that center is going to put you about 440. And if you have an SWR meter, I recommend you hook it up and make sure you're resonant. The lowest SWR rating, I checked this bar here at this location, you're about one point. Uh, two to one on your SWR. So pretty pretty resonant and pretty good. So once you've tightened both of those down, you tighten all three of these elements down on the back with the Phillips screw head. You want you can put this post bracket on if you want to, or you can leave it off. Um, this would allow you to put, I think, up to an inch and a quarter post in here, and you can mount this outside your house, run the cable into your house and you can use this antenna um, outside your house and you can be inside the nice air conditioned or heated home while you're doing your emergency communications. However, if you want to be mobile and out um, mobily walking around, it's nice to be able to hold on to this antenna, point it to the repeater and be able to use it. So this is really a mobile antenna, but it is able to be mounted on a post outside. So the next step you need to do is take your radio, these are the, the Baofeng radios, and there are different attachments that come with um, the cable. And there's an SMA um, male for an SMA female radio. That's what this is. This is my ham radio. It would work with this attachment. This is a barrel connection for two PL256 or 259s. 239s. This is a um, BNC connection if you have that kind of connection. But these radios have an SMA and they have an SMA male and it's an SMA female adapter. You screw on the SMA female adapter on here. Then you screw on the standard here and then you can again now hold this any way you want back here and now you are able to use this um, by pointing it towards a repeater again find out where remember where Benton City is point it just above Benton City in the Horse Seven Hills and you will be able to then focus this cone antenna um, or, or column shaped beam at that repeater and be successful with hitting it. Uh, this, I'll show you, even though I'm in my kitchen, I can hit the repeater and I can hear it actually on my radio in the ham shack. WRZS796. So even in my room in the kitchen here, not being outside, I can still hit uh, the repeater, whereas without this, Yes, or without this um, Yagi WRZ S796, I have no way to hit the repeater with the rubber ducky. Now, the reason why this works, this element here is actually the radiating element, it radiates uh, a typical omnidirectional. This reflector element, this actually bounces like a mirror back from this element. So you have all of this element this way, plus you have the reflection coming back. So now it doubles the strength. And then this element actually focuses the beam 
of the antenna to about 50 degrees up down side to side. It works the best I've found if you hold it in a vertical, I think it's a little bit better vertically, point it towards the beam and you'll probably have three or four times the um, gain that you'll have with the rubber ducky and be able to hit the repeater. So this is hopefully going to help those that are not able to hit the repeater. Um, and again, you gotta find out where Benton City uh, or Seven Hills uh, is and hit, hit your uh, Yagi antenna towards that. I'll send a, and include it in the link below, where to get the cabling and the Yagi handheld antenna. Um, it's right about 50 or $48 for the combination of this and will greatly improve your reception to the GMRS repeater. Anything else to add? You covered it. Okay, thank you.